and, and good afternoon everybody and I do appreciate all your presence at the very last, I uh, turned out to be the last but one talk of the three days events. So I expected probably Jacob and me, he was sitting here talking <laughs> here and then entertaining ourselves here for an hour or so. So I have to uh, declare at the outset that I'm not an expert in biosensors, I'm not a bioengineer. Nevertheless, the title I've been given and I'm very uh, happy to talk about is the variable technology and its impact on healthcare. I think if you look at this, I hope you can't see it and I hope you don't want me to talk about this. This is the physics the, uh, of biosensors about transmissions mode, uh, uh, reflectance mode of photoplasmographies. I thought it's unfair to talk about this, let alone I don't know anything about this. So no to that. So conflict of interest, I have to declare at the outset, is that uh, uh, there's no commercial interest to me to what I'm talking about at all. Uh, I'm a cardiologist, I'm not a bioengineer, and I, I'm just an uh, enthusiast of variable devices and health living enthusiast. That's all what my conflicts are. That's the outline. So we need to focus my talk really on the utility of variable technology. I would like to uh, uh, split my talk in three uh, uh, sessions. One of them will be the health and fitness uh, uh, utility of the variable technologies. We talk about the health care benefits of uh, using the uh, variables. And also I'm going to then go down and uh, talk about our uh, uh, recently developing uh, research study uh, called CHESS in collaboration with a startup company in Israel and Oxford University. Uh, anything that I talk about here today, it's are my views, it's not peer-reviewed, it's my views with all the faults in it. So please bear with me. What are the variables? The variables are mobile microsensors embedded in a variable instrument to acquire and process signal from a human body. And these uh, uh, variable instruments could be glasses, could be shirts, could be watches, could be shoes, socks, pants, belts, wherever you can fit a mobile sensor could be fitted to. Of course, we are most familiar with the watches and fingers, sometimes ring and smart glasses. All the, uh, 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 these instruments that we uh, embed biosensors into, they have got a pre-processing power. So they do already some data analysis. And that's the concept of the data, how they travel from a variable device, as you probably all are very familiar with. So the, the variable, variable sensors do transmit data onto by the Wi-Fi, a, a Wi-Fi system, the gateway onto the internet, and then we retrieve it from our uh, smart devices, phones, tablets, or PCs using an application of some kind. And that's the travel of data. It's a big business, as you might know. Uh, this uh, 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 company, for example, projects that the number of variable devices shipped or sold uh, will uh, rise from 13 million in 2013 to 10 to 130 million in 2018, and that will uh, raise a revenue of uh, uh, one point from 1.4 billion US dollars in 2013 to 19 billion US dollars. That's the variable technology for us, a huge business. Infographics, so variable technology, uh, just to show that where are the, where's the shares within this technology. I'd like to point out that at the moment, as we all probably know, the variable technology is used as an activity tracker and smart watches, and that's what represents probably most of the market at the moment. Smart glasses are coming up, and what is the least uh, 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 advanced is the healthcare related applications of uh, variable devices. But this is going to change. And you can see that's the time out variable and supported technology that I have uh, pulled down from the internet. The health related, uh, 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 medical related variables and devices are going to be dominating the market from nine, 2019, 2020, and onwards. So this timeline just tells us about where the uh, heart rate chest straps for sportsmen, having been wearing it, started back in 1980. Subsequent GPS technology activity trackers 0609, and then we had the mobile apps development, the wireless uh, 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 vital science monitors, and of course the integrated social smart devices, iWatches, Fitbit devices. Also. That's what came through from 2014 onwards, and everybody's just jumping onto that and buying all of this and 
using it quite rightly. So that's a, these are the, uh, 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 just a, a snapshot from the internet of variable devices that we may be familiar with. Again, you can put it onto a shirt, a pant, a belt, wherever you want to, or onto the watch, biosensors be built into that and use it for whatever you want to do. I'll start with the uh, first part of the uh, presentation of, of, of the variables in a, as in a commercial market. And uh, again, I've got no uh, conflict of interest in that matter. The signals detected by biosensors should be for this particular commercial uh, uh, market. Those people in particular who are fitness enthusiasts just want, just want to monitor the activity level of some kind and have a bit of a biofeedback, a bit of a boost that yes, I need to do extra more steps, etc. So the devices should carry at least an activity monitor and accelerometer. The latest devices have the triaxial. Why it's important? Because the older devices had just very simple monoaxial ones and they, they, they were very poor in picking up all the steps you did. Now we have got much more advanced technology. The triaxial monitor is much more sensitive and much more accurate in picking up all your steps you did and give you the right information on this. This activity monitor will then, with different algorithm, give you the number of steps you did, the distance you covered, the calories you burned, and of course, flaws uh, that, that you might have done, and many other things. The device that we are using for uh, uh, commercial reasons should also have a heart rate counter. This is usually achieved by a, uh, a, a photoplasmographic principle. And uh, uh, using uh, different alg algorithms hard, uh, from, uh, derived from heart rate and activity, these smart devices can also tell us about a sleeping, our sleeping pattern, how we slept, and what problems we may have when we are sleeping asleep. So these are the devices that is one of the companies that uh, produces this device. I use it because that's what I'm having. In fact, very uh, early on Fitbit uh, uh, devices, I started to use the, uh, uh, the, the one, then the charge, HR, the place, and I currently wear uh, an Ionic. Uh, the reason why I stuck with that, and in spite of having been my Christmas present from my family, an iPhone, iWatch, and I dumped it because it has got, this has got a battery life of five days, and the iWatch has got a battery life of one, the most, maybe two days. And it just didn't fit the purpose to me, but this does. So again, this does what, what, what a, a, a smart device should do, the activity <coughs> monitor, gives all the derivatives that I, I mentioned before, and the heart rate as well. So I will now, for the next few minutes, just focus on my life, if you allow me to. So a physical activity level at, uh, in, a, in a consultant setting at Milton Keynes University, you will be stunned how inactive a consultant can be <laughs> by just doing their job, daily job, in the hospital. Uh, uh, that was a video here. So that's what the uh, Ionic uh, uh, is doing. I'm not sure whether you can hear anything. Can you hear anything there? Okay, so it's a very clever device, does lots of things about the basics, and it, and it gives you programs that you can use to train yourself. You can use it in swimming pool. You can use it anywhere you wish to. You can pay uh, at, a, at, 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 at a tilt uh, like with, with, with your uh, iPhone you do. So it's a very clever little device. And I think there's you know, that's a sophisticated enough for me to be used. I'll just go there. So I had a questions here for uh, coming up and I just wanted to know who of the audience is kind of with me on this. Can just and, and, the, and, the, and the voting system doesn't really, uh, is not linked in with, with my talk. So can you just be showing a pair of hands of who of the audience uh, have or regularly wear an activity tracker or a smart device? We are really here 80 plus percent, beautiful. Of those of you, uh, how many do at least 10,000 steps a day most of the days? Beautiful, okay, 60, 70 uh, percent. Uh, do you walk at least five miles, which is counted from the 10,000 steps, or eight kilometers, that's equal to that? Okay, that's slightly less. Uh, do you burn, so does your device tell you how much calories you burn? Do you burn the 2,500 calories a day? That is roughly, uh, 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 that's one, great. Actually, so well, it's a very active sport lady. Uh, do you do regular? Do you go regularly to the gym or classes? Perform other leisure related sport activity? Three 
to four times a week for at least 30 minutes. And that's the recommendation derived from the <coughs> New England Journal. Excellent. We are talking about four or five people. So it's good to have a watch, but we need to do much more than that to be healthy and stay healthy to prevent disease developments. Do you sleep at least six hours a night, at least five days a week? Yeah, I think that's a bit of a better rate. Okay, that's good. So I don't lie sleeping, that's really great. That's excellent. So I continue to bore you with my very inactive, boring life. I picked a few days here, that's my Monday, but I do clinics, outpatient clinics, and on consultant day I'm doing admin, and that's what I'm paid for to do. I have got the problem if, uh, to commute from Oxford to Milton Keynes. So if you, if these are the, the, the steps that I'm doing uh, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm uh, on Mondays. So I get up at the, uh, 6.30, you know, have some, you know, between, so that's the, that's the flat line here where I'm driving to Milton Keynes, arrive here, car park, etc. And this is all my uh, clinic activities. You can see how little you move in cardiology when you do your outpatient clinics. Because you are sitting in the office, you are going out to ask the patient to come in, you're sitting back again, and you just don't do anything but sit. Uh, here's a peek, I don't know where this is. Oh, that, that's my canteen, uh, walk into the canteen to grab some food. <laughs> and then I go back to completely inactivity, doing my admin and my consultant of the day activities, seeing patients at the bedside, because again, you stand, you sit, you just don't move at all. And not until around uh, you know, half past seven or so, I'm getting even more inactive, because I'm going to my car and driving myself home to Oxford, and there you go. But on my way to home, there is a roundabout at which there is a gym. So what I then do before I arrive home, I take myself to the gym to make up all the lost activities for the whole day and make sure that I reach certain number of steps. If I take the gym activity out, the steps I'm doing here, I counted that roughly is around between 3,000 to 5,000 a day. And by just boosting it in a gym, I managed to make it 10,000. Can it be sustained? You know, do you do? It's very, very difficult. That was my Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, I'm sorry, it's Thursday, Thursday. So is it different? It's much different because you're much more inactive. I'm doing here cardiac CT and, and geographies. Um, 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 my activity level is between the, uh, uh, the, the uh, reporting room, the CT, and the console room. So that's within five meters radius. And I can see it's all flat. It's nothing is happening. Probably you go for lunch, but you, nothing is happening. And then, and then on my way home, there is a gym on the road, and I do some. Can I? No, I couldn't. Only 8,000 I could manage to do in the gym, so nowhere near to. What is the Friday? It's the most busy day in a cat lab. Did lots of patients, not only uh, cat lab work, angiograms and pacemaker, but transesophageal echoes and stress echocardiograms. That's the most you know, uh, technically demanding things. Do I do differently? No. Very inactive. Nothing is happening, really. Whatever you do, you just don't burn calories. You are inactive and you are spoiling your life. And if you do that for 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years before you're retired, and you only relate to that, you are diabetic, you are obese, you are hypertensive, and you have got stroke, heart attacks, and you are dying. <laughs> that's, that's how unhealthy our profession is. I had a thought about this. This is not consultant's job. It's anybody who is in an office-based job. Everybody is not a, a, a healthcare professional. It's everybody else who is office-based and does office-based work most of the time. Uh, just for entertainment purposes, I put the Saturday up. And I have to tell you that for the purpose of this talk, I booked myself in <laughs> on a high-intensity workout class. I knew. I'm putting myself on the spot now here. But I thought it's worthwhile. That was body attack. Okay, on that Saturday, I went and did pay seven pounds for this class just to show <laughs> what intensity it is. Very, if, do, do, do you do these things? Yeah. Very intensive. I almost died. That was one hour, <laughs> one, one hour experience, but very intensive, <laughs> high intensity workout. And that's what I did. And that, in the morning, boosted very well the whole thing. I, I went home and I was 
almost just on the floor because I was so tired and fatigued. This is the Sainsbury's domestic chore, etc. And then in the evening, I took the dog for a walk. And that's what added together 14,000 steps. But the problem is that you should not have peaks like this. You should have gradual scattered activity throughout the whole day. And that's what helps your health primarily. If I take the body attack here, you can see I managed to rise my heart rate up to 170, 180 beats per minute and I did not die. That's <laughs> great. So it means that I'm probably okay. Probably. I burned 856 calories over this 120 1 minutes and uh, that was, uh, uh, did almost 6,000 steps. <coughs> but I went to do uh, walk the dog uh, around Blenheim Palace uh, that was 2.6 kilometers and I managed to do it in 28 hours. That's a Shizon, Shih Tzu, Shih Tzu Bichon Freeze crossbreed. So it's a small dog, but it pulls. <laughs> so it was rather okay steps. And uh, I managed to do 3,200 steps. I was very proud of myself. 14,000, I never did that much, but it's great. Now, if I do that over a whole month period and I put it in this chart, you can see the line is the 10,000 steps. I'm doing very badly. So I only do 34% of my days achieving the 10,000 uh, steps targets, which, which has been recognized to be part of the healthy living and to uh, promote uh, uh, health and avoid disease developments. So very poor. The uh, uh, distance that I cover, it's uh, uh, you know, the eight kilometers or five miles a day, it's only 21%. Of the, of, the, of the time. Floor is probably 11 because I'm probably going upstairs at home, up and down. The colors have been, interestingly, they still add up to 76% of the time, burning the 2,600 calories. Don't know how it goes if I'm doing so little distance, but that's what the watch. The calories are calculated for age, body weight, body height, and activity, and heart rate. So it's an algorithm that takes all into account. So I mean, not too badly. Probably that's why I'm not that fat yet. <laughs> Uh, sleeping, that's very interesting. So, I can I assume that most of us sitting or, or, or standing here are adults between 26 and 64 years of age. Is that roughly correct? Should be. So, we have to have a sleep between 7 and 9 hours a day. We should not have less than 6 hours and we should have not more than 10 hours. If I take that into account, that's what my sleeping pattern is. So you can see here, it's not too bad actually, this uh, line here is the six hours sleeping mark, and I managed that 62% of the time, which I'm really happy with. Can I do better? Probably can. Should go earlier to bed, and should get up later. The smart, smart devices, the variables, do the sleep pattern analysis, and this comes, or may come very handy for someone who does research uh, 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 sleep patterns. It is divided into four different uh, uh, sleep stages. The awakeness, because we do have got awake periods during sleep. The REM phase, the rapid eye movements, where we do uh, dream and have got lots of uh, activity going on. The light sleep mode and the deep sleep mode. So the REM sleep is important for memory and mood <coughs> recovery. The light sleep is important for promoting mental and physical restoration. And the deep sleep promotes physical recovery, memory, learning, and more importantly, and I would just to stress on this importance, feeling extra fresh if you had enough proportion of your deep sleep overnight. So that's the one in dark blue that will tell you how good your mood is next day. You can see, and it's recommended between keeping it between 10 to 25 percent of your whole time spent in bed and slept. 12.5%, you may not see it, 12 percent one day, two day, 13, 13%, 15%, 7.7%, and 7%. I have to tell you, interestingly, it does correlate with me being very grumpy when I got up. I just did not know what to do with myself the whole day. It was really, it does predict this dark blue deep sleep pattern, which you don't need to have a lot of it, does determine your next day mood. And so, so that, that's what the variable can also tell us if you want to analyze it. I'm jumping now to the next session of the health, because this was the fitness, that was the brain pressure, etc.
variables in healthcare, and that's very important. What do we want to, uh, from, a, from a biosensor to know if we want to use it in a healthcare uh, setting? Of course, we do need to have the activity monitor, the heart rate, and the sleep is good to have. But additionally, we want to have oxygen saturation monitor for pulse oximetry to, to see the oxygenization of our bloodstream. ECG will be very useful to have direct uh, uh, ECG recordings, surface or microelectrodes, blood pressure, respiratory rate, temperature, skin temperature, glucose lactate monitoring. So if we had all that together in, uh, as the biosensors in a uh, multi-parametric uh, uh, device, that will be the best because that many information, bioinformation we will have from patients. That will then uh, 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 take us to patients. The patients will get this biosensor detected uh, variables and that will be transmitted onto a cloud uh, structure, different uh, safe, safe servers then, uh, that could be then uh, 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 taken to different medical centers, ambulance or hospital setting. Of course, data sharing is important, the safety of the data sharing, but that's what potentially could be very helpful and very, very useful for future. I have to, uh, so variable injectable implantable. So the healthcare profession has been using variable for more than uh, uh, 30 years. And if you just think about it, the Holter ECG monitor is a variable device. You put three four letters on your chest wall and the variable is on your belt, and it does collect for whole 24 hours your ECG traces. That has been out there for 30 years. We have been uh, able to monitor ECG traces with this injectable, as, as big as that, little device that we can inject under the skin and it sits there because the battery life is three years or longer to collect ECG data from patients who need to, that's patients who are blacking out, have got arrhythmias, who had a stroke and we want to capture atrial fibrillation. And equally, patients who have been fitted with uh, pacemakers or implantable uh, defibrillators for, for a reason, they can monitor that ECG heart, etc. plus the impedance of the chest that then also allows us to make uh, make, make uh, 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 assessment about patients' heart failure symptoms progression, and AI fluid accumulation in the in the in the chest. So we have been using that. Alive Core is a company that has developed this portable smart ECG device that has been taken up by Cardia, and that's the company now who is uh, promoting it uh, to detect arrhythmias. The uh, population who is targeted with that in the healthcare, approved now by NICE guidelines, is the patients with AF or stroke and you want to detect AF, or patients with palpitations to capture what the underlying ECG traces are in those patients who feel their heart beats. Um, these are the uh, uh, original uh, Alive Core uh, with a smartphone. You put your two fingers there and you just uh, 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 take the, uh, the ECG traces iWatch has bought out from Cardia a uh, uh, iWatch compatible strap uh, uh, arm band that you can only use with iWatch. What you do is you put your finger onto the sensor here and the part of the watch that sits on your on your on your on your wrist together allows you to take an ECG by the iWatch. Unfortunately there is no other smart device or variable that uh, uh, Alive Core has uh, sold their band, arm band uh, uh, for, but I think uh, that will probably happen. That will allow you to see whether you have normal uh, heart rate, no normal uh, rhythm, or you have got possible atrial fibrillation. And the quality is really good at, I think, 250 uh, hertz uh, sampling rate. This iWatch derived cardiac ECG monitoring device. Uh, has got also artificial intelligence prediction algorithm in it. Looking at the heart rate, tra heart rate changes, and that's one each minute, the trend of the heart rate associated with the activity chart will tell with the, AI, the artificial intelligence prediction whether this is an appropriate heart rate change or if you don't have the activity underneath your high heart rate, it will alert you to record an ECG because there's a disconnect, the prediction is probably that's an arrhythmia that you have, and it uh, since sends you on the watch uh, uh, an alert to record ECG, then you put your finger onto the, onto the arm band and you call ECG and you confirm what type of arrhythmias you do have. 
I'm not sure. Okay, just for quickly for you to see how this works. That's just one minute video. Now, for the very first time, they're able to see their electrocardiogram. Mind you, not their pulse, but the actual electrical activity of the heart. It's slim and compact. I can keep it in my purse or in my back pocket. I hit the record now. Place my fingers on the two leads for 30 seconds. It's amazing. I can do this in 30 seconds where it would take three hours to go to the doctor and back. I don't think I could live without my cardio device now because it's just that stress relief and that uh, peace of mind. So that's very simple to work with and very simple to do. Uh, that's the NICE recommendations. The cardio device has been endorsed by the NICE and people can use it. Uh, what I, uh, there are some uh, uh, commercial companies uh, who are targeting AF detection and community who are looking at uh, populations to take, uh, to, to, uh, to approach and to uh, 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 do arrhythmia detection to prevent stroke in patients with atrial fibrillation. Uh, there are ideas that, that, that one can do. Those patients who had a stroke should also be actively screened for arrhythmias uh, for atrial fibrillation. Uh, the diabetic patients, the hypertensive and the elderly patients, i.e. the high chance was core patients, even if they're in science room, they are the ones who you want to have this device in the clinic, diabetology for example, care of the elderly, to have in the clinic and to capture uh, unknown atrial fibrillations to prevent atrial fibrillations. Another type of an ECG, a variable glucose monitor, I'm not sure you heard about this. So it's not you pricking your finger and then you, 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 you dispose your blood into the, uh, the, the, the scanning device and you have got the blood glucose. This is on the wrist variable device. All you do, you put your hand on the variable. What then happens, it's a clever micro uh, needle that pricks out from the device back end without you noticing it. It just goes into the dermis and then samples the interstitial fluid for blood glucose. Clever device, never heard about it, but in a preparation of this talk, I come across with that. I think it's great. How does this work is just like this. Very clever biosensor, but this is clearly something to, to think about. So in summary, the utility of variable devices and a concept that technology, where I personally see the uptake of that is in prevention. People who are you know, uh, 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 variable and, and technology savvy or are looking after themselves, they are keen to their, uh, uh, monitoring their activity level and biological parameters, they are the ones who really uh, uh, will make a huge difference in uh, in, in early diagnosing of disease and preventing disease and that will have a major public health issue and, and benefit. Monitoring development of disease, for example, high blood pressure, arrhythmias, sleep apnea, uh, uh, septicemia, diabetes. That's those patients who have not got the disease and early, de uh, early detection of the uh, and recognition of the development of disease to allow early intervention to prevent people from major complications. The third uh, utility of the variables is the monitoring of disease progression and optimized treatment in patients with chronic conditions. And that's in patients with COPD, with congestive heart failure, diabetes, hypertension, etc. Mental health, frailty, and orthopedic surgical timing, I thought, it's all my recommendations, there's no official uh, 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 statement for that. That can optimize treatment and timing the intervention. Which would be the specialties that would benefit the most 
from a variable device in the healthcare setting. I had to start with cardiology. Uh, and yes, because we have got already approved devices for that, I've just, as I've sh shown it to you. But apart from that, respiratory physician, re respiratory uh, specialty, sleep apnea, uh, uh, COPD, asthma, uh, and progressive uh, deterioration of, uh, of, 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 of patients with recurrent uh, chest infection, for example, temperature, heart rate, respiration, and, CO and, and the oxygen saturation monitoring, that will also help uh, to monitor these patients. Diabetologist mental health people looking at the activity monitor of a patient uh, heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate to detect problems coming our way, early detection. Orthopedic surgery, I think it's a major, uh, uh, has got a major benefit to gain from a variable device by looking at the activity monitor in those patients. And I can imagine that sometimes, well I'm not an orthopedic surgeon, but orthopedic surgeons potentially, they make decisions uh, regarding <coughs> joint surgery depending how inactive a patient becomes apart from the pain that they have. An activator can potentially quantify the inactivity the patient uh, has, and that could be potential threshold of an operative indication of a, of a joint replacement surgery. The Google glasses are used for many things. One of them is the autistic children in autistic children to uh, uh, condition them and give some cognitive therapy. Care and of uh, uh, frail and elderly patients, of course, blood pressure, heart rate, activity monitor again, just to make sure that there's nothing dramatic happening. Uh, to that uh, uh, patient and, 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 and we don't find them on the floor all of a sudden uh, and, and then we can just uh, keep an eye on them. Obstructive and paradox certainly has got a role to play. So what will be then an ideal variable device for public health and healthcare system usage? We would like them, I would assume, to the monitors to have all vitals that we possibly can measure and you know, the multi-parametric biosensor systems are there. It's developing, evolving, and getting more and more reliable and sophisticated. Of course, the uptake is also limited by the reliability of the biosensors as yet. We want them to be all-in-one, comfortable, variable device with long battery life. Of course, the connection with smart devices and clouds into, uh, to, to archiving and analysis system uh, in particular, uh, in, a, in a very safety environment, you know, we are data safety conscious and all the, uh, 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 the safety have to go with that. And infrastructure to use and translate uh, uh, the data that the variable devices are uh, uh, monitoring for us will have to be developed and have to be with a joint data sharing to then to relate and translate into outcome of a healthcare society. <coughs> That leads me to talk about briefly about the research in Milton Keynes that we are planning to undertake and it's at a very advanced stage of uh, NIHR approval <coughs> of a variable device with a clinical trials governed identifier uh, depicted there. Variable devices, as far as I talked about it, uh, are measuring uh, 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 biological parameters. We thought about the biological parameters that we are using as the news scoring system, the National Early Warning Score System, which we are very familiar with. That measures uh, five, six different variables of biological uh, 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 parameters. If you have got a device that can also do exactly that, what a nurse does at the bedside, then you can potentially use the variable, maybe on the wrist, to do that for you and then not to have the, the, the nursing uh, staff time to do that with all the uh, 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 problems and effort that, uh, that goes into it. And the frequency at which you are sampling the patient's bio variables can also be as many as you possibly wish. That was the idea behind the, uh, the, the concept of this CHESS study. We have identified, actually I have been asked by an academic health science uh, center in Oxford where I can think about a project for a startup company who has got this device. And I said yes. And that's where the early learning uh, uh, science uh, project came to life. How? You know, the CHESS stands for Chronic, uh, uh, Chron Chronisense National Early Warning Score Study, because Chronisense is the company. And all what I have done, I took this long title into the Google acronym creator and the CHESS came up as a best possible option for the acronym. Hence, CHESS study. So in the first phase, 
and you can see on the Clear Governance uh, website, Milton Keynes is the, is, the, is the place where it's performed. We know about this, I'm not going to go into details, but that's what we are going to do. <coughs> that's the watch or the wrist for multi-parametric monitoring device that we are going to test against the standard clinical care news observations. So we are measuring the ECG, the blood pressure, the respiratory rate, the temperature, the oxygen saturations, the patient alertness level, and that device here, with all the five biosensors it can do, does all it for us. So that's a validation study. <coughs> that's how it looks like. It's called a Pulso from Chronisense. The device itself, the uh, little case that is put in, and it generates a variable, risk variable device, and when a patient is putting it up, that's what it looks like. Comes with an app, comes with a charger, and the device is already doing some pre-processing prior it pushes the data onto the cloud. So that's what it looks like and, and that's what the smart device will have as a signals. And this is our protocol that we are setting up. You know, this is cardiology, vote 17, CCU, beds there, beds there. Patients are approached, consented, those who are consented, they are going to uh, fit it with the device and we are going to get the data from the device uh, via Bluetooth uh, 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 transferred onto a tablet and then we can decide whether it's a hospital server, whether it's an e care system, or whatever else we want to transfer to, for making parallel comparisons between the standard clinical care derived measurements and this device. And I finish my talk up, uh, talk, 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 talk off by saying that there's a chest phase two study in planning that is going to take once the validation study has shown that this device can do what the nurse led. Uh, measurements uh, are doing or, or achieving, then we roll this out to see how this device fares in a community to avoid uh, admissions and, and, uh, and, and predict disease. Chronosense, hospital grade monitoring at home. In the hospital, patients can be confident they are monitored using a wide range of professional medical systems. What if there were a wearable technology offering chronic patients hospital quality monitoring at home, one that can comfortably fit on your wrist. This is Chronosense, the all-in-one solution for monitoring out-of-hospital patients as if they never left the hospital. Chronosense uses unique technologies from advanced sensors to capture high-quality, clinically relevant parameters from the radial artery. For the first time, measuring blood pressure from changes in the arterial diameter is made possible. These vital signs are translated using proprietary algorithms to meaningful clinical information, including an early warning score. Patients can go about their normal routine. The changes in medical criteria relevant to the specific diseases will be monitored and then transmitted from the device to an app to any third party such as a healthcare professional or caregiver. Personalized monitoring enables better treatment modification, improving long-term outcomes. And that takes me to my last slide, finishing it off. Healthcare trends, variables and digital technology. I think we do see and we hopefully I convince you from my previous slides that variable technology is advancing into the healthcare in a big way. Digital technology uh, will aid us to move from the hospital care into the primary care and more importantly into the patient's home. Whether it's a variable device or digital technology that people are using for fitness tracker purposes, chronic disease management and potentially with the safety of the data management we will be able to develop a telehealth uh, 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 environment where all these data can be safely used for the benefit of the populations. Of course, we need to see whether all these technological advances are ultimately translating into improved public health, improved life expectancy and or reducing healthcare costs. And with that, thank you for your attention.